Have you ever wondered how your brain learns? If it's something that you're born with or if it's something that you have to train your brain to do? Well, here's your brain. Well, not your brain, but a brain. Under the cerebrum lies the control center of the brain. This is where the magic happens, and as educators, we should keep these things in mind when creating our lesson plans for our students. Let's go over some basic functions. Here's the thalamus. It's considered the grand central station of the brain. All incoming sensory information goes through here first. Next, underneath the thalamus, is the hypothalamus. This is considered the life support center. It controls hunger, thirst, your respiratory system, heart rate, and even controls the pituitary gland, which is responsible for hormone release. Next is the hippocampus. It is sometimes nicknamed the seahorse or the ram's horn due to its shape. This controls memory processing from working memory to long-term memory. Next is the amygdala, or as I like to call her, Amy G. Dalla. She's in control of anger, rage, fear, survival, and possibly connected to emotional memory. Next, let's talk about the neurotransmitters. These are actually chemicals that the brain reads or feeds off of. Every sense has a special chemical it uses to communicate with the brain, but the sense first has to be turned into a chemical, and that process is called neurotransmission. Electrical pulses will help move the chemical message to the brain, and the brain will create an appropriate response. For example, if you were walking in your yard without any shoes on, and you stepped into something that was warm and squishy and had a pugnant smell, your brain would automatically tell you to pull your foot away because you just stepped in poo. How does the brain process information? Within your hippocampus, your brain is going to process memory. And this is important to note because all the stimuli that is coming into your brain will be processed here and either forgotten or stored away in long-term memory. When giving information to your students, you need to keep in mind how you're presenting that information, how much of that information you're presenting, and really what the most important part is of that information. This will allow the brain to recognize things that should be stored for long-term memory, or maybe something that isn't so important and they'll forget it. The use of repetition, rehearsal, and practice will help your students properly code this information. As teachers, our goal always is for retention. We want our students to remember the information year after year after year. It's difficult to do this. According to primary recency effect, students retain the most information within the first 20 minutes of the lesson. Keeping this in mind, you can present the most important information of your unit first and then break down the details later. Scientists are currently studying how sleep is related to memory processing. It is currently believed that long-term storage of information happens during your REM sleep stage. Here's your brain again. Let's look at how it's organized. The left side of the brain is responsible for analysis, sequence, time, speech, word, letter, and number recognition, and it processes external stimuli. The right side of the brain is responsible for holistic thinking, patterns, spatial awareness, context of language, facial, place, and object recognition, and it also processes internal messages. Keeping these things in mind when creating brain-based lesson plans will allow for optimal learning experiences. Novelty in the arts entertain the brain, and the brain loves to be entertained. As you can see on this model, several parts of your brain are being used with all sorts of different stimuli. Here is movement, here is where music is processed. Over here is where visual stimuli is processed. And linguistics are processed in two separate parts. This area is called Broca's area, and it controls speech. This area is called Wernick's area, and it controls comprehension of language. These areas are named after doctors who experimented with the brain in the mid-20th century. When using novelty in the arts in your classroom, statistics prove that higher engagement and retention rates increase within the students. As an educator, not only will you have fun delivering the information, but your students will retain it better. So let's put this all together. You know the basic functions of the brain and what controls what. Remember presenting the most important information of your unit within the first 20 minutes is ideal for your students to retain that information. Presenting the information in fun ways will also increase retention levels. With this information, you as the educator can provide brain-based lesson plans for the optimal learning experience.